In this week's episode of Working with Todoist, I answer a viewer's question about filters. Hello and welcome to episode 160 of my Working With Todoist series. My name is Carl Pauline and in this week's episode it's all about filters. Now specifically what I've done is I'm putting together a tutorial on some of the useful filters that you may want to use. Now the thing is of course we all have Todoist set up in a different way. It's not all set up in exactly the same way. So what you will probably have to do is adapt the filters that I'm going to show you to work for your setup. But apart from that, some of these filters are really, really useful. In fact, not just some of them, all of them are really useful. I just should point out though that filters is a premium users feature, but then let's be honest, if you're not using the premium version of Todoist yet, what's stopping you? That's what gives Todoist its tremendous power. Okay, let's get into Todoist, but before I do that, I would just like to say if you do like this video, please click on the like button below, and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe. Okay, let's get straight into Todoist, and let's start talking filters. Right, let's get started with the very first project. I'm going to go through this list as we have it right here. So what we're going to do is first up we're going to look at projects. Now this is a filter that I've set up that will just show me the projects that I want to see. So if we go back in, if we look into my projects folder here, I've got work, home, goals and someday maybe. Now the thing is, my someday maybe is my dumping ground. I know uh, um, David Allen says don't use this for dumping grounds but my someday maybe really is a dumping ground. I don't want to look at that on a day-to-day -day basis so I'm not adding that into this filter. So I'm going to start with projects. Now essentially what happens here is I've put the double hash and I will show you that here in the edit function. So edit filter. Double hash tag work comma double hashtag home comma double hashtag and goals now the reason I've done that is because I want to see everything in these project folders if you look here on my projects work home but in work I've got subfolders here and also in home I've got subfolders so I've got my 2018 holiday and my house cleaning project so I want to see all of those so that's why you put a double hash now if you don't want to see all of them, then all you would need to do, let's go into work. If I uh, edit, the, sorry, if I go into my filters, if I go into this and I actually just edit the filter and remove one of these hash tags, what you'll see is the home work project now only shows what's in that work project. So you can see here, uh, I've got one in work which is prepare presentation and annual business review and staffing. So what would happen here is by putting in this one hashtag, I only see what's in that work project. By putting in double hashtag, I see everything. And that's what I want to do here. So I'm going to put that in there and save. And now you can see I get all of my work tasks, all of my home tasks and all of my goals. Next up, weekly review labels. This is when I'm doing a weekly review. What I would like to see is all the tasks that I have in my Todoist that has no labels. This actually is a very, very simple label. It's just no labels, as you can see right there. That's all you need to type, no labels, and it will show you all the tasks that you don't have labels for. Now, that's to me, it doesn't matter because I my system is that if it doesn't have a label, then there's no urgency and I don't need to get it done right now. It just needs something doing to it in the future. But for those of you guys out there who are using the labels and are being pure GTD, then this is a really good filter for when you're doing your weekly review. You can get all the tasks that you don't have labels and you can assign labels. 
Similarly, we've got the same for weekly review and this is date. So these are with no due date. So for those of you guys out there who like to have dates on all of your tasks, not something I would personally recommend, but some of you do like to have dates coming up on all of your tasks, then this is a great filter. Again, it's actually a very simple filter. You just type no date, as you can see right there, and it will show you everything that doesn't have a date within your Todoist. And when you're doing your weekly review, all you need to do is like, for example, here, I can just put uh, Tuesday, uh, hang on a minute, get that Tuesday, and it will disappear from my no due date and you can go through all of them so that when you complete your weekly review both that can be completely empty now another useful filter is tasks that you've created this week so what the label query for this is um, created after colon and then minus seven days so these are all the tasks that I've created in my demo account this week and so you can just review all the tasks that you've actually created this week now people often ask me well how can I create a filter to show me all the tasks that I've completed completed this week well the answer to that question is you can't however you can go into your karma up here click on that and you can see view all completed tasks what it's going to do is you can filter this by various ways that you want. I'm going to just show my completed task and I can review everything that I've completed this week. Now, this is my demo account, so it's only showing I only use this for demonstrations. But like seven days ago, which is a week ago when I probably last used this account, then you actually have all the tasks that I completed on that day. And then 12 days ago was the previous one. And I can now go to two weeks and you can go back as far back as you want. This actually goes back right to the day one when you started using Todoist. So this is a way that you can review all the tasks that you've completed in the last week and go back as far as you want with that one. So, but this is a very useful task. If you're doing, when you're doing your review, weekly review you can actually just see what tasks you've comp uh, added this week and you can count them for all you you know if you, that's what you want to do next up urgent this week this is a really good one as well because this is great for the review so this will see any task that you've actually assigned a red flag to so what I've got is P seven days and P1 this is good for planning out the week so which task particularly if you do follow my system of today's objectives so I don't really consider my red flag as urgent I just consider my red flag as objectives for the day I assign that flag to two tasks for every day so this is a good one that you can use for adding the red flag and you can plan out the whole week for your actual objectives while you're doing review you just add the red flag and then you can check how many uh, tasks you've got for each day so that's seven days and p oops seven days and p1 and that will show you all the tasks that you've got urgent and you can do this with anyone so if you've got p1 i could actually do comma and then p2 and that's going to mean or P2. But for, for all intents and purposes, it's better to keep it as simple as you possibly can. So that's urgent this week. One of the ones that I really like is what I call my today or you could call today's must do's. Now, this is anything that is flagged red or flagged P2 and that is due today. So today and P1 and then this standing up line and p2 i'm sorry i don't know its proper name i'm sure some of you viewers you'll know its name but the, that sign here this actually means or so today and p1 or p2 these are the must two tasks that you have today so if you follow my system of having two objectives and eight focus tasks for the day then you would assign the eight focus tasks as your p2 and this would only have a maximum a maximum of 10 tasks a really good filter just to keep you focused in on the things that are truly important for today and I think that's a very very useful filter also moving on work tasks these are all the tasks that you have related to your work again you can do that uh, from your projects but if you just want to focus in on all your work tasks so if you just like to see everything in one place then you can actually just create a work tasks and again this is just a really simple filter it's just double hashtag and work some people do that you could do the same for home so it'd be double hashtag and home 
and it will show you all the tasks that you have to do around your house. If you wanted to do work and today, then you could just change that to today and work. And that would give you all the tasks related. <laughs> Isn't that nice? I've only got one task to do for work today. This is a demo account, so don't worry about it. So that's another way that you can play around with that one. And it will show you all the work tasks that you've got assigned for today. So that's a very useful uh, filter to have. People. Now, this really does depend on how many people that you have in that you want regularly work with. But let's say you've got four people that you work with. Then maybe you want to create a, a task a filter sorry for all the people that you work with if you've got like 20 or 30 people that you regularly work with I think the query is just going to get too big and you may as well just assign that differently use that as labels but here all I've got is at Jim and at Jenny and that can be there's just labels that I'm following and finally the one that I really really love and it's something that I keep playing around with is the actual keyword filter so if you click on this one, email, this is going to show me any task that I have that is related to email. And all I've done here, and this is a beautiful filter here, is you've got search, colon, and then email. Now, of course, you can do this with search, colon, presentation, search, colon, Jenny, search, colon, Jim. You can do whatever you want. For me, for example, I actually use search, colon, student because I often create tasks related to students with just uh, uh, that have that keyword in student and essentially what happens is it starts showing you all the tasks that you have in your that have that word so in email this one's obviously quite easy email gin sales projects for next projections for next year but then another one could be don't forget to email Sarah about next week's trip so email is in the task name and it will come up in the filter even if it's not the task you're looking for, you can actually look for the word email in the comments by clicking on over here. So using a search term, and I'll show you that one again because some of you may find this one more useful. Search colon and then whatever keyword you're looking for. So you could type in holiday, vacation, you can type in car, you can type in whatever you want as a search term and it will show you all the tasks that actually contain that keyword that's a fantastic filter to use so there you go hopefully i've answered the question from quite a few of my viewers who answered that question about what would you like me to cover in future episodes of working with todoist if you want to add your own ideas then please head over to my facebook page calpoline productivity i'll put a link to that in the show notes below so you can actually add your own it's right at the top of the page i've pinned it to the top so you can just add your own ideas what you would like to cover alternatively you can just leave it in the comment section for this video and i'll be more than happy to add it to the list of future episodes thank you very much for watching this episode of working with todoist it just remains for me now to wish you all a very very productive week